Hey, what's up guys? My name is Alex from Landspo and I welcome you to my YouTube channel. About two years ago I released the video regarding DaVinci Resolve color shift after the render and it's been the most successful video on my channel since then. It helped a ton of people and it has a lot of good feedback overall. But there are still some comments suggesting different solutions and recommendations explaining me why I am wrong using um, Rec 709A and why I should avoid it and therefore I decided to dig a little bit deeper Therefore, I watched on Blackmagic forum, I watched an official video from the Blackmagic colorist regarding this exact topic, and as well as I contact Blackmagic support, and today I'm finally ready to provide you with three different solutions, and believe me, in the end of this video you will perfectly understand what is going on, and your colors will match perfectly after the render. Please be patient with me and watch this video till the end as I would like to address this issue in details, but of course if you are in a hurry I will leave timestamps down below. First of all I would like to say that I'm not a professional colorist, therefore I highly recommend you checking two amazing YouTubers which is Callan Kelly and Darren Mosting. They explain color management in details and they provide you with a ton of uh, useful information overall. I will link their channels down below as well. But in simple words, color management is a tool that we use to achieve color accuracy across different devices, um, for example TVs, laptops, your smartphone displays, and so on. And the second thing we need to know that there is a color grading standard which is Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. Being able to work in this color and gamma space will help you to achieve this similarity between as many devices as possible. Unfortunately for us, different brands decided to go their different ways. For example, Apple or Samsung, they have all their own color signs. Therefore, we will never be able to achieve a 100% same look between those devices unless they work together, which I'm not seeing in the near future. And as well as you can see, even those great YouTubers, which you can see right here, pay attention to their skin tones. They are not the same when I'm looking at my Apple display or Samsung TV. But a good thing is that today I'm going to provide you with three different solutions which you can try for yourself and see which one works the best. I even managed to work in Gamma 2.4 and still have my colors match perfectly after the render on my Apple MacBook M1 Pro of 2021. To use Rec 709A correctly, first thing you would need to do to go to DaVinci Resolve Preferences, then go to General and make sure that you tick Use Make Display Color Profiles for Viewers and click on Save. After DaVinci Resolve prompts you to restart the program, please do so. Then you would need to go to Project Settings, Color Management, Choose color signs DaVinci YRGB and here in timeline color space you need to set Rec 709A and in the output color space you would need to use Rec 709A as well. Click on save and as you can see our gamma has shifted. On the good side your colors will match perfectly now. It is also recommended by professional colorists from Blackmagic Design as the way of addressing this issue, as well as here you can see an official reply from Blackmagic Design support that if we still experience any color shift, then we can use Rec 709A as the way of solving the problem. Using this method your colors will match perfectly now when it comes to using Apple-based programs and devices such as MacBooks, iPhones, and QuickTime Player, for example. On the other hand, there are some programs such as VLC, Mozilla Firefox, and whenever you upload into Vmail, these programs and web pages can bypass Rec 709A color space, therefore leaving your image oversaturated and over contrasty. Using Rec 709A, you need to understand what your clients use and where this content is going to be delivered. If you deliver this content to Instagram, TikTok or YouTube, you will not experience any issues at all. And if your clients use Apple-based devices, they will see no difference. 
But if, for example, you are gonna film some movie, which then you would like to put on Netflix, or some different TV broadcast, or if your clients use VLC, or if they are gonna deliver to Vimeo, then you need to take these things into consideration. Therefore, you will not be able to use Rec 709A because your image will be ruined. In the end of the day, there is nothing wrong with using Rec 709A. It is even recommended by a professional colorist from Blackmagic Design and as well as Blackmagic Design support. You just need to know these limitations and therefore you will be able to use Rec 709A correctly. First, I will explain how to set up this method. You would need to go to DaVinci Resolve Preferences and make sure that you automatically tag Rec 709A scene clips as Rec 709A and hit save. Then you would need to go to Project Settings and change your color space to Gamma 2.4 and Gamma 2.4. And now you can click save. As you can see, our gamma has shifted. If you don't want to set your Rec. 709A gamma tag in DaVinci Resolve Preferences, you can go to your render page. Here in advanced settings, you can find the gamma tag and you can select Rec. 709A right here. Rec. 709A gamma tag was created by Blackmagic Design to force Apple based programs to play your Rec. 709A gamma 2.4 videos in Rec. 709A color space. In simple words, it means that if you color grade like this, then you can play your video in, for example, QuickTime on, on, or on your iPhone and your videos will look as you intended to. And then if you open VLC player, for example, your videos still look great because it is still Gamma 2.4, which is industry standard. On the other hand, I never use this method because I still experience color shift on Apple-based devices. But some of you guys wrote this, that this method works for you, therefore I understood how it works and why it was created, therefore you can try it out and see it for yourself whether it helps you or not. For the third method, you would need to go to the project settings, go to a color management and select DaVinci YRGB color managed. Unclick here automatic color management, select color processing mode to custom. In the input color space, you need to select the camera settings that you were using. For example, I was shooting with Canon C70, therefore I need to select Canon Cinema Gamut Canon Log 2. In the timeline color space, you need to select Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 and the output color space will leave at Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 and we hit save. As you can see, our gamma has shifted once more. Using this method, I still leave DaVinci Resolve preferences for automatically tagging Rec. 709A scene clips as Rec. 709A. By using the third method, I not only was able to have my colors match perfectly as I intended to, but I'm also covered across as many devices as possible. This is the best way to color grade using MacBook displays in my own experience. The only problem I got is with the third-party plugins such as Motion VFX, because whenever I'm using Motion VFX plugins with this color space, my colors are shifted but you can easily correct it using the wheels, colors of the plugin itself. I hope that now you understand the problem and the solution much better right now, guys. And you need to try and experience all of those three methods and see which one works for you. Of course, if you will be able to work in Gamma 2.4, then you are covered across as many devices as possible, but if you are not able to get your colors matching perfectly, use Rec. 709A. There is nothing wrong with that, you just need to be sure that you know the limitations of the Rec. 709A and when you will not be able to use it at all. Of course, the best solution for all of us would be to buy an external monitor and to use an external device which will um, calibrate your monitor and then you can use in Gamma 2.4 without any issues. But as for me, I don't have money now and besides, sometimes I travel and I would like to take only my laptop with me 
not taking an external monitor with me definitely. Therefore, you can use those solutions to help yourself. As always, if you find this video useful, please make sure to leave me a like, comment down below and consider subscribing to my channel for more upcoming content. As a beginner filmmaker from Czech Republic, here on my channel I share everything I find useful when it comes to my journey towards full-time filmmaker and working in DaVinci Resolve. My goal is to inspire as many people as I can to follow your dreams. And therefore, I'm sharing as much knowledge as possible here on the channel. I'm doing three full-time jobs right now. Therefore, maybe I'm not pushing the content that often, but I'm trying to push only what I really find useful. It was a pleasure serving you guys as always. And until next time, Naschladano.